Hey, it's Kevin Lawn with the New Warehouse Podcast here at Modex 2020 in Atlanta. We're at the New Warehouse Podcast booth, and I am joined by Matt Davidson. He is the VP of Product and Marketing at Losix. And you guys may remember Losix from our ProMat series last year. Uh, Losix actually was pretty new on the scene, so we're going to check in with Matt and see uh, what they've been up to, talk about their uh, product portfolio a little bit, and uh, talk a little bit about indoor positioning and what that kind of means and how that can uh, help us in the warehouse field. Uh, so Matt, welcome to the booth. Welcome to the podcast show. How are you? Thanks. I'm doing great. Yourself? Good, good. Uh, how is everything going with you for Modex? It's day four now, so. You know, it was a little bit slower than we were anticipating right. for obvious reasons, but generally speaking, the quality of the people who we were interacting with was mm -hmm. significantly higher than it had been in the past. So versus just getting a whole bunch of people asking questions and moving on, we felt like we had a lot higher, I say conversion rate, but at least interest level where you know there's right. a designated follow-up so from that perspective it's been going great definitely yeah that's actually what i've been hearing from a lot of people actually is that the even though attendance is a little lower that the quality of the attendee is a little higher which is good yeah. for you guys definitely right absolutely all right so also um you guys may have seen on my uh instagram at the new warehouse uh posted a little picture of the tiny warehouse model that low six <laughs> has in their booth which is awesome so tell, tell us a little bit about that how that came about well, so we're doing multiple different things right. around our warehousing solutions, mm -hmm. and we have been doing different kind of scale models just to kind of demonstrate. Right. For example, we had a smart doc demo last year mm -hmm. where and we, we realized that there is an opportunity to visualize what we're trying to do. and. Mm -hmm it helps us kind of help people understand, you know, we've got our area that focuses on the dock, and then right. we can also have an area that focuses on the inside. And, you know, a lot of people really like that visual cue. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's like nice, bright, shiny white. And so people come and look at it just yeah. to see what's going on. Yeah, grab my attention. I, I like it a lot. It's really cool. Um, my son would love it, actually, <laughs> to play with it. But, um, so tell us a little bit about, you know, you said um, at ProMat last year, you know, Low Six was pretty new to like the warehousing industry. Um, debuting with the smart doc. So talk to us a little bit about, I guess, well, give us a little background first for maybe some people that weren't listening back then and not, are not familiar about uh, Low6. Tell us a little bit about what Low6 does. Yeah, so we, I mean, we call it spatial intelligence solutions. Okay. Um, but last year at Promat, we launched our first solution, which is our smart doc product. Right. And so what that does is it helps understand what's happening at the dock, both mm -hmm. inside and out. So it's monitoring dwell time, it's alerting based upon potential detention fees mm -hmm. about to be incurred, but then also looking at the activity and what's happening inside the dock, which is a critical piece to negating dwell time. Right. So if people aren't actively loading unloading, we can start to give you correct notifications to you know, figure mm -hmm. out where you need to be concerned about in order to optimize what's happening at the dock. Okay. And so, you know, that was our big coming out party. Um, we had had some business in Japan, you know, the previous year, mm. but really that was our big foray into North America. And right. so that's been a great launch for us to continue moving on, uh, getting a foundation here in, uh, in the U.S. Okay, awesome. And, uh, and ProMat was kind of our coming out party too as well. We just celebrated one year anniversary yesterday. Congratulations. Um, thank you, thank you. Um, so. How has the last year been? So you guys uh, started off the Smart Doc, and then you also came out with the Smart LPS in the fall as well. So tell us a little bit about what's going to happen for you guys over the last year, and uh, tell us about the Smart LPS as well. Yeah, so with the Smart LPS, what's really been fascinating is everyone believes they know it's happening inside the warehouse because right. a lot of people have pretty intelligent WMS systems. Mm -hmm. But then if you ask them how they really know what's happening, they're mm -hmm. like, well, our WMS system tells you to. And that's all dependent upon a scan. Right. So what we're talking about doing here with Smart LPS is seeing what the actual operational reality is on the ground. So okay. where are workers actually going as they're making their pick routes? Mm -hmm. Where are forklifts being utilized? How many forklifts are being utilized? Right. And so you know, when you start to look at the combination of Smart Doc plus Smart LPS, mm -hmm. you're really starting to take institutionalized knowledge or belief and being able to just ongoing digitize that data. Okay. And what we see with Smart LPS especially is not only does it give you an idea of what's really happening, mm. but it gives you a different way to look at how to gauge your process improvements. Okay. So as everybody's making a process improvement, a lot of companies, what they'll do is they'll bring an outside consultant, right. maybe once every couple of years, if they're lucky, and <laughs> then they'll get a bunch of recommendations put those in place, and then a couple years later, repeat. 
Right. But what we're trying to do is it's continuous optimization, right? Mm. So A, you can get this type of data for a pretty cost effective price. Right on an ongoing basis. So you can characterize what it is that's happening inside your warehouse, you can make decisions, but also as you change your processes, as the seasonality of your demand changes. What this enables is we can now start to say, okay, you, you point in time, you made a change to this process, you can measure whether the output really did change, whether the efficiency, the you know, amount that workers are walking really does change. Right, yeah but then also see if there are other unintended consequences. Hmm. And so because you're continually collecting all of this data and we're doing all this analysis for you in the cloud, right. it really makes it a much more simplistic way to view what's happening inside the warehouse. Hmm. Very interesting, yeah, that makes me think about a previous conversation I had this week about you know, talking about lean warehousing and things of that nature and you know, focusing on certain um, aspects of a process and, and changing it and it may make that process, that part of the process better, but then down the line somewhere, the other part of the process now becomes bottleneck. So being able to kind of, I guess, get that, I think it's called spatial intelligence, right? Yeah. Um, so get that kind of spatial intelligence and actually see visually that now you're creating some other kind of issue without probably, probably sooner than you would relying on some kind of data coming from WMS. Well, so I feel like what WMS is probably going to end up telling you in right. the case where we don't exist is, well, something happened, output changed. Right. But what we can do is help you then identify what else has changed to affect mm. that output. Okay. So just knowing that something's worse doesn't right. make it easy to fix. Right. And so that's kind of the level of insight that we're providing is an additional, in addition to doing things with people who don't have very sophisticated WMS systems. Hmm. So we've worked with some customers where they're uploading the WMS system into our data so we can process that and do side-by-side -side WMS reality plus the operational reality hmm. and help to provide really interesting insights on what's actually happening. Got it, very interesting. So now, so how does, um, how does the system work? I mean, what kind of things are you putting in the warehouse to be able to capture this kind of information? Yeah, so we're using a technology that we've developed in-house. So we've actually been around for a while, even though last year was our coming out party. Right. And so what this technology does is it uses uh, fixed stations, which we call anchors, that are okay. placed throughout the warehouse, and that provides the infrastructure. And then each worker forklift mm -hmm. asset would have a tag that we use to locate and figure out what, you know, where things are moving through space. Right. Uh, what's interesting about the technology that we developed is it's based on Wi-Fi. Mm. So the long-term plan is you don't need a separate tag, but you can actually use your phone, any Wi-Fi device, to see oh, what's interesting. happening. Yeah. And so there, you know, there's a current product out there which we think is great, mm -hmm. but the future is even more exciting about the direction that we're going to go. Really interesting stuff. So, so implementation then, uh, from the implementation side, I mean, it sounds like it's pretty, pretty simplistic. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. We've, you know, just you have a little bit of infrastructure you have to deploy, mm -hmm. and that that's pretty turnkey. So, both the mm -hmm. cost of the hardware, the installation is meant to be as simple as possible in order to get off the ground. Okay, interesting. So now, so we talked a little bit about, I guess, the product portfolio that you guys offer, and kind of what's what's to come and what's current and. So now, I mean, talk to a little bit about, you know, the indoor positioning and how, you know, it's kind of mitigating warehousing logistics challenges. I mean, we talked about the process uh, changes a little bit, but overall, you know, what can you really get out of implementing these different things and, you know, what kind of long-term and short-term benefits can you see as well? Yeah, so obviously if you've spent any time at the show, you realize right. automation is what's coming. Oh yeah, it's here today. Which, yeah. but, Everybody is also saying, you know, Amazon's like at least 10 years out. If right. Amazon's at least 10 years out, what we're going to see is a very piecemeal approach to automation. Right. They're, each company is going to find the thing that works for them. Mm -hmm. They're going to find the areas of concern. But full automation is definitely a ways out. Right. So what we're doing is helping companies say, all right, we need to improve our processes as they mm -hmm. exist. So by understanding where the hotspots are, you can do things such as safety, you can reallocate where inventory is being placed on a okay. real-time basis. You can uh, you know, rebalance your assets. So if you have, you have 10 forklifts, why? Because you've had 10 forklifts. Are right. those all actually being used effectively? Mm. Or are all of them being used 
consistently, in which case maybe you should look at adding more. Yeah, maybe need more. And so there's a wide variety of inputs that we can do to kind of frame up the operational reality of your work, of mm -hmm. your uh, warehouse, your distribution center. Right. So now introduce automation. Well, now you're going to know exactly what's been happening in a warehouse. You can identify those spots. And so we can actually really help with the implementation or the understanding of where automation might fit best. Right. You know, cobots are currently the new uh, hot thing. Oh, yeah. For good reason, because robots can do some things really well, but mm -hmm. people can do most things better. Yeah. But if you can combine the two, then all of a sudden you can get a lot more efficiency out of right. the worker. Right, you can make the people, uh, people's job a little easier. But the funny thing is about this is that the robots don't actually know where the people are. Right. And the people don't know where the robots are. Mm -hmm. So in order for them to truly work together, one of the valuable things that humans have is awareness of what's happening around us. Mm. So we can start to work together where it's like forklifts will also have problems with hitting cobots or so I've been told. <laughs> really? <Okay. laughs> uh, but you have forklifts, you have cobots, you have people, yeah. and all of them now have this awareness of where each other is in the system. So mm. rather than there are two cobots that are available. Yeah. It just decides where it should go, right? Okay. And so we can add that level um, as people grow. And then again, with all with robots, they have a general understanding of what's happening around them, mm -hmm. but they also can get lost. Right. And so having that ground truth knowledge of where they are. And so this, both on the practical aspect, but also on the kind of orchestration of all of it, we think mm -hmm. that there's a huge opportunity for smart LPS as you know, automation moves forward. Right. Very interesting stuff. So, so how can people uh, find out more information about Low6? Yeah, go to low6.com. We uh, just launched a new website. Everything mm -hmm. is out there. Um, and of course, you know, feel free to contact our sales department at sales at low6.com. All right, great. So Matt, thank you so much for coming by the booth and I uh, hope you enjoy the last day of Modex. Thanks, appreciate it. All right.